Who do you think you are kidding, Oscar Valdez? Frampton's got you on the run. Welcome to Three Rounds of Gifts by a guy called Henry, the interview show where you get to find out a little more about the person behind the fighter. I'm Henry, and uh, today I'm here with a very, very special guest. Um, they call him the Jackal, they call him the Doctor. Some simply refer to him as Carlos. It's Carl Frampton, MBE. How are you doing, mate? Carl, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm all right, I'm all right. Excellent, I've practiced that like 20 times. That was good. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy how that went. <laughs> we've got three rounds of gifts, we've got okay. some quotes, and we've got some stories. Are you ready? Not, not really, very nervous. I've been nervous and very intrigued about this to see who you've been speaking to, so mm. far right. away, we'll right. see. Let's, uh, let's begin with a little quote. Um, being the first street on the Protestant side of the interface, it was like th flipping Braveheart sometimes. Um, that's a little quote from you about childhood, grow up in Tigers Bay. Yeah. Can you talk to me a little about that, about that and sort of reflect on it? Um, yeah, so in the season, we're right in now, it's marching season back home, so a lot of orange marches and stuff, and that was always when the trouble kicked off. But when you're a kid, so I lived in Upper Canning Street, and there's a street called Dunkern Gardens, and then there's the New Lodge, so Tigers Bay, Upper Canning Street, one street, New Lodge, which is Republican nationalist community, and all the trouble used to happen at the bottom of my street, um, literally 50 yards from a door. So as a kid, it wasn't scary or anything. It was just like what you knew, but it was it was exciting more than anything. So you, you were, were used to yeah, it was, you were used to it. It was like you were in the middle of it and doing things you probably shouldn't have been doing. But as a kid, you're just excited by that and. Um, yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit mad and a bit like Braveheart at times. Like I, I remember seeing like throwing stones at a wee boy and messing about and doing things you shouldn't be doing. But then when when the older guys get involved, it's like yeah. literally running in from this side to that side, like hand to hand fighting, guns being pulled, petal bombs being thrown. Like it was insane. Let's go for the first gift. Um, so in amongst all this chaos, you were still having a childhood. Um, and thinking about that, it actually turns out that you and me have something in common. It's got a nice pair of red white fronts here. They're for you. What? What do they mean to you, Carl? What do they mean to me, red white fronts? They don't mean a lot, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> the Jungle Book. The Jungle Book, yeah. Mowgli, yeah, 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 Mowgli, yeah. The yeah. Book. So you're a big fan of the Jungle Book. Uh, that was that was my show when I was a kid. Loved yeah. it. Loved the Jungle Book. Um, yep. So, so I'm starting to think, who have you been speaking to now? Like, um, <laughs> love the Jungle Book, yeah. And uh, apparently, um, you're, you're trying to get your kids to, into it as well these days. Yeah. Um, the old one, though. The old ones. Oh, yeah. The old cartoons better than any of the new stuff. I haven't even seen the new ones, to be honest. New stuff's okay, but the old stuff is so, the original's always the best. Um, I love the Jungle Book. I uh, yeah, I love love the Jungle Book. Yeah. Who doesn't though? You know what I mean? Everyone does. Bare necessities. Yeah. Not talking about. So I've got a quote here. I rounded the corner, and there they were without a thread on them. Any yeah. ideas what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does that bring to mind? So you're obviously talking to my dad. Um, when I was a kid, see this is weird, so I don't know what happened, right? <laughs> so me and another guy, who's a friend, still a friend of mine, Keith Ansley, and I think there may have been a girl as well. Oh really? Vicky Patterson. I didn't realise there was a third member of the maybe she, Maybe she wasn't, maybe she didn't strip, I don't know, I can't remember, but I was very young, I was on a trike, um, and my dad came around the corner and we were cycling around mm. in the nude. But Do you remember the reason for this? Or just I said, and I don't know if this happened or not, because if it did happen, it's like, it's got to be reported to the cops. But <laughs> so, and it's like, it's in my head at the minute, like, did it even happen? Mm. And like, as time elapses, you don't know whether it's There's true or not. There's witnesses, so I'm thinking it happened. But I'm saying, I think at the time I said that a man told us to take her clothes off. <laughs> In the in the alley, <laughs> and me and Keith, and me and Keith done it. Sure. So um, if if I've told my dad that and he hasn't reported it to the police, 
I probably should have been taken off him. (laughs) Thinking, you've got your own kids, obviously. Thinking about kids these days, the sorts of things that they're into, um, you know, iPads, technology, all that stuff. Do you ever look around you and sort of think, all you need is a broken seesaw? Broken seesaw, yeah, yeah. Um, That was my favorite toy as a kid in the back garden. We had a back garden, we had a backyard, which was literally... It was described to me as a yard thing. Yeah, it was like, it was half the size of that ring. And uh, me and my brother had endless fun on the broken seesaw, rather than going up and down, because it didn't do that. It was like a little attachment broke in the middle, so we used to just spin around <laughs> and like spin around in circles on it. I was talking to someone about this the other day, but really? it was it's probably better than going up and down. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, why not? It was fantastic, crack. Yeah, yeah. you're going to get one for your own kids. <laughs> um, and uh, do you recall the, uh, the dead brother prank that you played on your father? Do you remember that? Yeah. Um, it's quite intense. Put it mate, yeah. <laughs> right, so I said, I said to Craig, my brother, who's only, he's, Craig's only a year younger than me, right, you just lie down here and I'll pretend to my dad that you've died. And um, I was up in our room, so Craig's lying like still on the bed. I run down, dad, dad, I think Craig's died. <laughs> And he fucking bolts up the stairs. <laughs> As he would. <laughs> he bolts up the stairs and Craig's going, huh. Oh. And he's like, what the fuck? Is there something wrong with you, you stupid bastard? <laughs> um, and um, so when you think about, you know, obviously you're a world-class boxer now. And uh, to be a top boxer, you know, that requires a strong base, a strong, strong set of tree trunks to do your work from. Would you say that the foundations of that were built during leg wars with your brother? Leg wars? Hi. Yeah. Leg wars, you used to have leg wars on the sofa. Um, oh, this is brilliant, like, where are you getting this stuff from? So leg war is like, I'm at one end of the sofa, he's at the other, and we just like meet in the middle and push over legs, he's mm-hmm. the strongest legs. And you always won. But right? a, a quick tip was, I would always win, but if he was starting to win, yeah. you'd stick your big toe up his arse. <laughs> 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 and he'd fucking roll away. Um, <laughs> So I always won, yeah. Squats are overrated. That's a great game. It's, you should try it out. I, I will, sometime. <laughs> um, it was actually your mum who encouraged you to go down to the boxing gym, am I right? Well, yeah, I wanted to go down myself and then yeah. she kind of brought us all down, me and a she group was, of she friends. She was the enabler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, so you started off um, at Midland Boxing Club. I've got a quote here for you, which is, one thing that stood out was from the first bar, he never took a step back. Um, and that's from your first amateur coach, Billy McKee. Okay. Um, and so thinking about that, what, like, that's interesting. Like, you go into the gym, and what was your motivation to be there? And uh, obviously, that's, that was the beginning of your style as well. Well, sure. yeah, well, the motivation, really, I don't know if it was motivation. It was kind of just, like, curiosity, really. There's a boxing club literally 200 yards from my front door. I wanted to try it out. Some more intrigue then. Yeah, so I, I tried it out with a, a squad of friends, and, and I loved it. And I felt like I was decent at it. I was a quiet kid. Like, I was quiet in the street. Um, and I've been, I was obviously short, and I'd have been, not, not bullied like, but you know, the louder kids that have backed off and shied away from sure. in the street, but in the ring, when I was boxing, I was beating them up, so I was like, this is great. I want to talk about where things may have gone had you not got into boxing. Mm-hmm. Can you talk to me about the only other job you've had as a lemonade delivery man? Yeah, Boy. I, I, uh, I used to help a guy called Cooper, Cooper McClure, a good friend of mine, mm-hmm. who's uh, my head trainer in my old amateur club. Um, I used to just help him on a Saturday morning as the lemonade delivery boy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was it, yep. Some interesting characters though you used to uh, I was, uh, So on the sh- his, his run was the Shankle yeah. on, on a Saturday. So the very first day, I, I remember this, I remember it, I was in the street, I can't remember the name of the street, but the Devon Jubilee is the pub. Uh, and it's whatever street that's on. Cooper says, right, there's four bottles of lemonade. This guy always gets the same bottles of lemonade. He'd be in the house, just walk in. So it was like nine o'clock in the morning. So he sent me into his house. So I just walked in the door to leave him. There's a guy, two guys sitting, drinking tins of stagger, like cheap shit drink. <laughs> and he has, he completely bald, but he has his hair drew on with a permanent marker. <laughs> But it was like he drew sidebirds and all. Yeah. And like, I was like, That's how you get the style you want, though, isn't yeah. it? It's perfect. It's accurate. <laughs> but um, 
that was that was the very first house I called to. Brilliant. But I loved it. I loved doing it. It was yeah. good, good crack. Few, oh. few. Do you want me to take those off here? Do you want them? Have yeah. you seen what they're made of, by the way? They are um, top of the line. I believe. Oh yeah, ninety percent nylon and ten percent spandex. So <laughs> breathable. <laughs> So I've got a question. What does a Brazilian footballing legend and a notorious Venezuelan criminal have to do with Carl Frampton? Um, so Carlos, I used to get called Carlos. Obviously my name's Carl. Yep. I used to get called Carlos in school. Yeah. Um, I was, felt like I was half decent at football when right. I was a kid and I used to get stuck in and not compare myself to Roberto Carlos. Well, it's been, the comparison's yeah. been made. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> Have you bought it or not? Yeah, I... Uh, and another kid called Marky Adamson, who went to school with me, called me Carlos the Jackal one day, and then when I had to look for a boxing nickname, yeah. I remembered that, and, and that was it. Can we talk about um, what the relationship is between Bebo, a nightclub called Kelly's, and Weatherspoons? Yeah, so Christine, that's, yeah, Bebo is yeah. where I met Christine. Yeah, you were friends on Bebo. Yeah, well, she added me. I remember me. Bebo, Bebo was good. She added me to yeah. Bebo. Right, um, do, you, do you remember the politics of Top Friends? Top friends. That yeah. was brutal. I know, I know. You, like, there was 15, wasn't there? 15 and you used to move people around. Sure, and there'd always be like a couple of nerds who'd put guys in there who they weren't, they uh, weren't mates with. Yeah. And like they look at it and go, oh, right. Uh, <laughs> it, was fucking, it was really intense. It was really intense. Well, so she added me on Bebo and then we used to like talk to each other um, yeah. online. Yeah. Online, that sounds fucking sad, doesn't it? We used to talk online. But now it's, it's like, like Napoleon Dynamite. I would have no life if it wasn't for online. I know. But um, that's, that's, that's how we met. And then first time we actually met was in Kelly's nightclub in Port Rush. Yep. And then a year and a half later? A year and a half later. You took her on a date to Weatherspoons? Took her on a date. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah. Took her to Weatherspoons. No, we call it Witherspoons it Wither. back home. Okay. And it's not spelt Witherspoons, it's spelt no, Weatherspoons. Yeah, I don't know why, but everyone calls it Witherspoons. Yeah. Anyway, took her there. Yeah. Um, it was really fucking nervous. First time I've ever like, taken a girl out on a date. Mm. It went well, clearly. Well, it did. She keep, gives me grief about it, but yeah, yeah, she did, yeah. I, I went and had a steak and didn't get her anything. To eat. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think. I think she says I would have got her something, but I think she says she didn't Wait, want so, anything. So you ordered a fucking steak. You yeah. sat there and ate the steak while she just watched. I it. think so. Yeah, <laughs> she had a few drinks. Apparently, you also got pretty drunk and were falling over, and she had to sort of. Oh, uh, so then we went to a nightclub called the Box Nightclub. All right, and there was another leg. Yeah, in the Odyssey, right. I got steaming, fell on the table, knocked a load of fucking drinks over, and all these girls wanted to punch my fucking head <laughs> in. And uh, Christine had to sort it out for me. Tell me about the time you were at a wedding and someone called the Hulk made you dance because they thought you were Paddy oh, Barnes. Yeah, the Hulk, he's like famous all over Ireland, like <laughs> renowned fucking king of the gypsies, like yeah. renowned hard man. Yeah. Another guy called Roy Sheehan, who was like a fucking absolute joker, one of the funniest people I've ever met, yep. was at the wedding. This was David Oliver's wedding. Yes. Um, so it was actually at David Oliver's wedding, like literally a few months before mm. I went to fight him. And um, Roy told Joe Joyce that I was Paddy Barnes. <laughs> um, and obviously I wasn't Paddy Barnes. Yep. And he just <laughs> fucking threw me around the dance floor all night. <laughs> Thinking I was Paddy Barnes, like dancing with me, like. Well, right, but I was like, ah. Oh, right, right, thinking though that Paddy had just won a medal. And so Paddy was, just won a medal. He was trying to celebrate yeah, with you, pretty much. But yeah. it was I wasn't Paddy. Yeah. But I didn't want to tell. Him. <laughs> <laughs> I shit myself the whole time. Uh, but it was a good story. To look back on, funny. Yeah. yeah. You turn over, you, as we say, you turned over in 2009. You went pro. Um, what did that feel like, and what were your ambitions at the time? Um, my, my ambitions were to be a world champion. Like I, I thought that I had a good, a good style, a good professional style as an amateur. <laughs> I genuinely believed I could have been a world champion. Um, one regret I have is not winning a British title. I'd love to have won a British title on the way up. Um, but I would love to. My, my grand and all always wanted me to win a British title. And yeah. it's a not too gorgeous late. looking. Ah, fuck It'd be a bit weird, wouldn't it? I know, I know. People would be like, what are you, what are you doing? I know. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a lovely looking belt. Let's talk about competitiveness. So the only time you've been knocked out was playing football. Yeah. And the worst cut you ever had was from falling down the stairs. Yeah. Um, so it's unsurprising that after you comprehensively beat Alejandro Gonzalez, you got knocked down a couple of times, you go out, you have a few beers, a few tears are shed yeah. after that occasion. Yeah. Is that right? 
after after the Gonzalez fight. Yeah. So what are you talking about here? In, like literally straight after, or when I got home? I'm I'm not sure exactly of when it was. I just know that there was a few tears shed uh, in the light of the knockdowns, basically. Even though you'd won the fight. Maybe. Oh, aye. I... Josh Taylor. Can't say. I think I was probably just crying about oh, what the fuck. <laughs> Getting drunk. Well, he had a couple of drinks and uh, yeah, yeah. Got emotional. Yeah, and I sat with a kid, Gonzalez, who is no longer with us, rest in peace. No, um, but I sat, sat with him, had a chat. I remember, I remember crying. I remember, it was funny. So we had Andy O'Neill was in the opponent's corner. Andy O'Neill is the big ginger guy who does the cuts. Oh, sure, you would see yeah, him. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's pretty, like, you'd know his face. It's all over the place. Yeah. So I remember thinking at the time, the lead up to the fight, why the fuck is Andy O'Neill in the corner for my opponent doing his cuts? Why is he here doing that? And it was annoying me a bit. And then I got a few drinks in me after the fight and had been dropped and stuff. And I attacked him. <laughs> well, physically? <laughs> I physically attacked him in the, in the lobby of the hotel. <laughs> really annoyed, but we've made friends since. And, uh, and he understands why he was attacked. <laughs> That's brilliant. I want to think about the three occasions where you picked up world title belts. Yeah. So that was uh, the second fight with Kiko Martinez, uh, the Scott Quigg fight, and then when you moved up and fought Leo Santa Cruz. So I want to just give some highlights from those occasions. So, uh, so from the first, from the first fight, um, I've got a quote, which is, <laughs> "He called me bald on Twitter, and this is not forgivable." Yeah. How brilliant is that? I was, I was Kiko. I was kind of like, yeah, it was fucking hilarious. Me and Kiko have a great relationship now, and we're, really? we're, good, we're good friends. Oh, that's great. We're a wee bit of a language barrier, but um, we have a good respect for each other. But um, yeah, must be interesting conversations. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I respect you. I respect that, you. <laughs> <laughs> getting a Google Translate to each other every now and again and saying, oh, that's quite cute, actually. Yeah. yeah, but he. Um, <laughs> He called me bald on Twitter and this is not forgivable. That's what he said. It was, it was one of the best quotes I've ever heard before. My, my dad um, <laughs> came up with a line um, when I fought. I can't remember if it was a European title or a world title, but my dad said you should say this to him. Mm. It was for the European title. He says, and I said to him, that title is like your hair, you're losing it. <laughs> and he went fucking like <laughs> apoplectic. Like he went insane, like he just lost it completely. Yeah. And he said, he said something really aggressive and the Spanish translator wouldn't, re wouldn't repeat what he said. But he kind of made something up and he says, um, he likes you. The, the Spanish translator made something up and says, oh, you need to wear boxing gloves when going to the toilet. <laughs> and I went, what the <laughs> fuck does that mean? What does that even mean? But he just like made something up. Yeah. I asked him after it and Kiko apparently says, if you shake your dick, more than twice when you go for a piss, you're a wanker. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> right, are you ready for your second gift? Yeah. Okay, so I hope this brings back some fond memories for you. It's a framed picture of uh, two of your best friends. We've got um, Quig and Hearn with yeah. that infamous check. Yeah. There you are, that's for you. What am I, it's framed there, right? Am I gonna hang That's gonna somewhere? go in your living room next to your Zoo Magazine Award. <laughs> so there you go. That's great. So, Thinking about, <laughs> thinking about that period of time, I suppose looking back now, it's quite funny. Yeah. But at the time, it might have been quite annoying. Oh, it really wound me up. It really wound me up because I knew there was, I knew it was worth more money that fight. And yes. people are looking, um, people are kind of looking and going, hold on a minute, is Frampton turning a million pound down? I remember, I remember people thinking, um, oh, this is what the fuck is like? Why is Frampton pulling? He's obviously he doesn't doesn't have the balls to fight him, but. I knew that the fight was worth, worth a little bit more than that. So I feel like I made the right decision in the end. I did make the right decision in the end. Well, clearly. Of course I did. There's no argument there. Yeah. Um, that, was, that was really like, Hearn like would be, he would probably be embarrassed looking back at that well, now. If you look at, you want to hold that picture up to the camera? I think that's absolutely hilarious. When you look at they've got their, they've got their suits on. They've got their suits on, they've got the check. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen Scott Quigg wear a suit aside from that. Uh, it was on, it was uh, it's, on, it's uh, funny though, it was on Sky, uh, like Sky Sports News, like breaking news, and yeah. it was like them too. <laughs> you must have been like, what the fuck is that? That was the first, I, like the first I heard of it was when everyone else seen it. Yeah. Like, what is going on here? What the fuck? But, Brilliant. Yeah, that was a... Uh, good promoter though, to be fair. He is Sorry. good, he's Clever a very move. good promoter. He's a very good promoter, but... 
Well, you used to get on well now, you're telling me. But... Well, I get on okay with him, yeah. We chat to him, and yeah, he's, a, he's, he's obviously very good at what he does. And then I've got another quote for you about, regarding the, uh, the Leo Santa Cruz uh, New York fight. Yeah. There was motherfuckers there smoking cigars and drinking double cognacs who didn't even know what cognac was. Yeah. What am I speaking in reference to? That was so after um, <laughs> that was after the fight when I won. So I decided to invite everyone down to a pub called Annie Moore's in, in Manhattan. And I put a few quid behind the bar. And I'd arranged this with a bar before I got there and said, look, I'm gonna stick a few quid behind the bar and let's see how far it gets. Let's hopefully get everyone a drink. The bar was packed out. Mm, like. I remember seeing images of it. So um, a girl came to me like 40 minutes later. And that's how much I put, but it was a decent amount of money. And the girl came back like 40 minutes later and says, that's done. And I went, what the, what the fuck? How is it done? How is that done? Like, what are people doing? She went, no, it's done. And uh, the instruction was no doubles, um, fucking pints, bottles of beer, a single and a mixer, but that's it. Don't let people take a piss. <laughs> so and what did people uh, do? They were okay they then after. <laughs> well, they tried to take a piss, but once, once it was like kind of told, they couldn't do it, they didn't do it. So yeah. the next, I stuck another few quid yeah. behind and it went a little bit longer, but I think everyone got a drink. I remember yeah. not even getting a drink myself for ages, <laughs> like trying to fucking say in a photograph. I'm like, hold on, I've been here for an hour. I haven't had a drink myself. Oh, that's brilliant. It's good crack though. If Chris Avalos is the opponent you got on with the worst, in your career, would you say that Nuno Donnell was the guy you got on with the best? Uh, Donnell's a great guy. Mm -hmm. So he was texting me the other day. Yeah. He's a, a fantastic guy. I remember thinking at the time, um, it's got to be a bit of bullshit. He can't be that nice. You know, when I was approaching the fight with him. Bit of Andy Ruiz. Yeah, a bit of that. But Donnell is genuinely probably the nicest guy in boxing. Yeah. He's, a, he's a great guy. His wife, Rachel, a lovely girl as well. Um, her and my wife Christine and I have a decent relationship and a bit of a friendship going on as well. So um, yeah, that's a that's a good good boxing story. I yeah, I like I like Nido. Yeah, how incredible would it be as well if you managed to win that Super Series? Uh, do you know what? It would be amazing, and it would make my win against him look even better <laughs> as well. So it would because he knew he's a freak. Inui, he's a monster. Dunar made a good point. Yeah. He says, and obviously I knew he's a, a serious puncher, and I've seen him like up close when I when I watched him in, in Glasgow. Terrific puncher. But then ours kind of, you know, it's just like a water off a duck's back. Then ours says to me, when I hit them, sometimes they do funny dances on the ground or they fall asleep. Yeah. They're getting back up when he's hitting them. Yeah. Oh, fair it's point. Fair point. It's a fair point. Yeah. So it's two real punchers against each other. It's going to be a great fight. Talk to me about egg in a cup. Egg that was cup. a good fad. Yeah, it's a, it, I still... You still do it? I do it. I haven't, I haven't done an egg in a cup in a while. Mm. It's a fantastic snack. If you bulk it out with some toast, it can be a main meal. Speaking of egg in a cup. Yeah. No, I'm joking, I haven't got one. <laughs> <laughs> but it needs to be made, right? So it was a documentary I'd done in the, the Vegas fight um, with Santa Cruz, and I made egg in a cup, and people were sending me I saw pictures it. of it. It was hilarious. That was absolutely rancid looking oh, ones, though. Some of them were stinking. <laughs> some of them were doing them in microwaves and all. It's like, oh, you stinking bastard. But you need to do it, right? And sure. the, the trick is that the egg needs to be hard boiled. People think mm. soft boiled egg, <laughs> but hard boiled, and then it's the butter that makes it soft. So right. Hard boiled, pinch of salt, pinch of pepper, plenty of butter, sure. and just beat the fuck out of it. That's <laughs> a bit it. of streaky bacon as well. I saw one. Streaky like bacon, very nice. And what, I, what I've done before yeah. is made like almost like egg in a cup sushi, where if you get good streaky. You can put the egg in it and wrap it around it. Sounds like more effort than it's worth. That'll no, it's very, very nice. Okay, I'll take very a one for it. <laughs> Looking at some of your, uh, your awards, if you had to pick one of the three, which would you go for? Uh, Ring Magazine Fighter of the Year, uh, your MBE, or um, your Zoo Magazine 2015 British, Britain's Coolest Man Award, in which you defeated the likes of Tom Hardy, Prince Harry, David Beckham, Ed Sheeran. That was a pretty big one. Yeah, it was a big one. Uh, Ring Magazine Fighter of the Year, probably yeah. for me. It's that's special. that's a sick award. That's a, it's a great one. Being and getting an MBA as well. Well, you know, a kid from Tigers Bay never imagined getting any accolades like that. Um, I've had a few special awards. Just got of course, a doc Doctor Doctor, Doctor, Doctor Jackal as well. Now that was another big, very one. funny name change from you. Onto yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only going to stay up for a while. I'll, I'll take oh, it really? down soon. It was just a, it was a wind up yeah, really just for a while people. to annoy people. Have you had some? Have you had some messages about it? Yeah, a few people giving me grief. You're not a real doctor. Yeah. Well, I am. 
I am. I've got the certificate. So you, you, you actually said something hilarious, which was, "Don't come crying to me when I won't sign your passport first or yeah. something like that. I can, I can, okay. I can officially sign passport photos. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, someone told me recently that um, there was a priest requesting a tenner a go, I think, for a passport photo signature. And I was like, is, this, is that for real? Yeah. Indulgen indulgence is called, you know this. And they were trying to defend it as if <laughs> like, no, nah, well, you know, you just have people come and signing passports all the time. Like, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> like, you shouldn't be charging people a tenner for signing a passport photograph. I don't think so anyway. Well, well. You, don't, you, might, you, might not, you might want to go back on that one if the next fight doesn't go too well. Yeah, yeah, yeah good point. <laughs> <laughs> Delete that. <laughs> I'm, re I'm really interested in fighters' sort of mentality and mindset, because you, know, you hear all these quotes about boxing being sort of 80, 90% mental and all this. Mm. Um, and before you went out in Windsor Park, I could hear Jamie saying, cool head in the hot kitchen, cool yeah. head in the hot kitchen. But how hard is that when you come out and everyone's screaming, Frampton's on fire and all that? that was, I, I really soaked up the, uh, the atmosphere. I remember Jamie actually saying, remember this, like, take this in here. So I did. And I remember I was walking to the ring yeah. and I could see myself on the big screen. I was just like smiling to myself. Uh, there, you look very serious when you come out and then there's this moment where you break out in this huge grin yeah, and you're it like, and it's weird. almost like it's hit you where you are and you're yeah. like, oh damn. Nah, it was, uh, it was, it was weird. It was a bit, probably a bit vain that I'm looking at myself here going, oh, like smiling. Yeah, but it's around. almost like a reality check, isn't it? It, it was like amazing. Yourself, isn't it, it was absolutely amazing. I'm glad it, it happened. Just quickly reflecting on Josh Warrington, I know you've spoken about it a lot. Um, me and my friends will talk about it. Like, I'd love to see it again because it's a weird one because often when a fight's won well, you don't want to see it back. But yeah. with that fight, it was weird because even though Josh won well, you still nicked rounds and it was quite clear to me anyway that you got the tactics wrong. Yeah. Or not, maybe not that you got the tactics wrong, but that he hit you and then you... Yeah. you well, so for it, the basically. tactics were to move and to box him and, yeah. and, and try and move around the ring and we knew it was going to be physical. I, I completely, myself, and I'll take sole blame on this. I underestimated his punching power. Mm. Didn't believe he could hurt me. And within a minute in the, in the first round, he had hurt me. And he hurt me. He, he hurt me in the second round as well. He had a big bash, I think, from his knee mm. on my quad. Do you know what we call that? We call that a grandpa. People used to do that to me at school. Oh, did they? They can't see, they knew you that. You can't walk for ages. Oh, I was bruised. So I can only imagine if it was in a fight. You want to see the bruising on my leg? Like, I took a <laughs> photograph. Like, the bruising was insane. Um, so, I remember like kind of limping back to the corner after the first round. I didn't want to say anything to Jamie because after the first couple of rounds getting beat up, if you start going off oh, a sore leg, it's almost like you want out. And I didn't want out. I wanted to, I wanted to stay in. And I, even during the fight, because I was, I was fucked, really fucked um, after the, the disastrous start. And I, I done well to nick a few rounds in the middle, but I was thinking, don't get stopped, don't get stopped. I didn't want to get stopped. Um, got a quote here from, uh, from big Craig Frampton. Yeah. Um, I think it's a case of listening to the coach and taking it one fight at a time. Do you uh, agree with those wise words moving forward? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so is that from my dad? Did he yeah. say that? Yeah. Um, a direct quote. That's good. No, that's, that's how I'm looking at it as well. You know, I'll, one fight at a time, mm -hmm. I'm not, youngest guy in the world anymore. I do have dreams and aspirations to be in a world champion again, mm. but um, it's one fight at a time at this stage of my career and, and listen to Jamie. And, and that's kind of my dad. My dad never really gets involved in my career and never says too much. He's always there to help me yeah, if I ask for help and for support, but he never give me advice in terms of boxing advice. But I think that's his way of saying, Listen to your trainer, box, don't have a fight with Josh Warrington. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, already won. That's him going around the houses to say it. Definitely. Um, so you've signed with top rank. You've got this fight with Emmanuel Dominguez, which has just been announced, which is pretty exciting in Philadelphia. Um, but everyone's, even yourself as well, you're looking at those big fights. This is to, this is to launch you to the big fights. Yeah. I've um, got a final gift for you. A third gift. So. It is the Dad's Army soundtrack. Ah, uh, yes. Right. That's for you. Do you know what? A very underrated film as well. I wasn't sure how the film was going to go, but I think the, um, the characters they got and, and were, were brilliant. And um, there's a story that goes with that as well. Yeah. Can you tell me, can you tell me why I've given you that? Yeah, I, uh, I, I used to sing it yes. um, when I was a kid. I, I, once, I once sang it in the BB, Boys Brigade, yeah. and I also sang it. Um, so I'd sang it in the BB and the kind of people had heard about this. 
I sang it. I got called in. I was out in the street playing as a kid in Tigers Bay, and I got called in to a person's house, and there was infamous UDA um, commanders there, Johnny Adair being one of them, and I sang. Who do you think you're kidding, Mr. Hitler, yeah, to, to Johnny Adair in a, in a kitchen <laughs> in Tackers Bay? <laughs> and they all give me a load of money. Really? Yeah, a few quid. You've got a decent voice on you, haven't you? I like to think I do, yeah. yeah. No, I've, I've heard you hit a few. Tunes. I'm all right. It depends. I need to like, get the right song. Mm, the right acoustic environment. I'd love, to be a good, I'd love to be a singer. I'd love yeah. to be a good singer, but I, I can get by. Excellent. And um, I've done something here for you. I'm not going to ask you to do it because I think it'd be unfair, but I've rewritten the lyrics for you yeah. in case you need help calling out a certain future opponent. Do you want me to sing it? Do you know what? You can sing it if you want to. So, <laughs> so this is to the theme of Dad's Army. Right. So, I'll give you a can we just let everyone know that you've done this? I haven't said this. I, prepa right? I prepared, oh, I prepared right. this, this for Carl. This is the first I've heard of it. Yes. Right. You need to start in the right key. <laughs> Who do you think you are kidding, Oscar Valdez? Frampton's got you on the run. He is the man who will stop you in this game. He is the man who will make you feel the pain. Cause who do you think you are kidding, Oscar Valdez? If you think Carl Frampton's done. Whoa! <laughs> that That's huge! That's huge! That's one for the fans. That is sure. one for the fans. Yeah. I hope we start saying that. You should post that up. Um, right, so anyway, thinking of Oscar Valdez. <laughs> um, we hope he's the target. And the, the, so the gift is obviously, we've got the story, but the reason I've left it to the end is uh, it's a, quite a tenuous link, but in the song, they're sort of talking about being down and out and people thinking they're down and out. Yeah. I do feel like some people are saying, you know, Carl Frampton's had his best yeah, yeah, days. Yeah, of course they are. Um, and, and I suppose you hope that people think that, but you'll get the fights now. Yeah, so, I yeah. suppose. And um, people have been thinking it probably for a while. And you look at, you look at my last performance against um, Josh Warrington, and, you know, looking from the outside, if I was, I'd probably be saying the same. But me knowing that that was a really under par performance. Mm. If you go back to the Nanito Denaro performance, Luke Jackson was a relaxed performance, and it was you know it wasn't the, the highest level of opposition, but it was an easy fight. Denaro was one of my best performances, and it was only two fights ago. Mm. Um, so top yeah, it was a good performance, and, and I was relaxed and I, and I boxed very very well. Mm. So people think that I am dumb, but. Who do you think you're kidding? Who do you think you're kidding, uh, <laughs> Mr. Hitler? So final, final two quotes, and then that's us. Every setback, every setback is a setup for an even greater comeback. Is the pin tweet uh, on yeah. your on your Twitter page, and you recently tweeted as well the, your reasons for still being in this game for family, for pride, and to secure a legacy in a sport that I've loved and hated. Yeah, reflect on those. No, I, I look, yeah, I done that that, that pin tweet. I done that after the Santa Cruz fight. Um, the Santa Cruz defeat, and it's still there. Um, I tried to take it down, but I don't know how to take, undo it. <laughs> undo a pin. I thought you were just a really deep guy, but you just couldn't unpin it. I can't unpin it. Can you unpin things? I'll, think I'll can do it for you afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you want to. Uh, we'll see. But um, I have tried to take it down before, but I couldn't do it. But right. the other thing that I tweeted the other day about like being away from a family and stuff, and yep. like I love my family. I love Christine. I love my kids. I love them so much, and I. It's, they don't want like they don't want me to box, and that's Christine doesn't want me to box. Mm. Um, my kids don't want me to box because they get upset now when I go training. My my wee boy, like every like, if I was in the car, I was I phoned him. Oh, I'm in the car. Oh, you coming? Are you driving home to see us? Like he he thinks I'm. He just wants me to be there all the time, yeah. um, and I would love to be there all the time. But this is really. The things I said, they're like, I'm doing this for my family. I'm doing it for my kids. I want them to be proud of me and speak highly of me mm. in 20 years' time and, and be proud of their dad. Like, if I win another world title, I go down as, I think, Ireland's greatest ever fighter. It would be hard to walk away when you know there's still miles, you know, stuff left in the I tank. I think so. And, and after a fight like Warrington as well, I never wanted to walk away after that. But I feel like I'm doing it for them, even though they don't want me to do it. Um, and it's probably there's a wee bit of selfishness in there for me that it's about legacy um, for me. And it's a, it's a pride thing. Like, I'm, I'm a proud man, but I've, I've promised my family, my wife and kids, there's not long left. And, and they, they, 
you know, they put their life on hold so I can go and box. You know, we miss family holidays and stuff, and, and it's hard. And, and people are kind of talking and saying, oh, well, you know, other workers are doing this and people are driving trucks and stuff, but I don't have to do it. I'm doing it because I want to right now, and I want to set up a real secure life for them. In a year and a half's time, or whenever I'm done, just imagine like being able to go on holidays whenever you want, do whatever you want. Get as many broken sea as you want. Yeah, and spend the rest of the time with your wife and kids, yeah. the rest of your life, and not have to worry about things. So I'm making the effort right now so I can afford to do that. Brilliant. Well, Carl, that's everything I've got on you. Um, I hope you enjoyed the experience. I really enjoyed Thank that, man. Thank you very much. That was, a, that was the best interview I've ever done. Thank Love you so it. much. Thanks, I really man. appreciate it. Thank you. Top man. There we go. Really enjoyed that's that, it. man. That Excellent. was good. Thank you. If you've enjoyed the interview, give it a like and subscribe to a guy called Henry. Or don't. Whatever.